So I'm Toby Samo. Uh, I'm chief medical officer for Allscript, and so therefore I represent the evil vendor community. Um, but uh, actually, having been involved with uh, being on the advisory board for Smart C on this time, um, it's been great to see that the, uh, the collaborative nature of, of this group with uh, all the different stakeholders uh, that involved, whether it be the researchers, the clinicians, uh, the, uh, the, the, the patient and family community, as well as the vendors. And that level of communication is key, uh, and that level of col collaboration is, is so important uh, to where we're going uh, in the health IT industry. So I want to uh, uh, talk some about um, where we have been and where we're going and what are some of the trends that we see uh, that we should be looking at. So where have we been? I, th I think that uh, many of you in the audience will uh, uh, recognize this, at least the triangle I added, the, uh, the climber. Uh, this is the Anderson Pyramid of Usability. And we can debate where we are. I'm sure most people would say we're not nearly uh, far enough uh, uh, up, uh, um, up that pyramid uh, where I show this person to be. Uh, but we have uh, initially looking at just what is the functionality, and that was the initial battle. Our, our system can do this, and we can, you know, you click on this button, and it has that capability. That was the use of the functionality reliability. Uh, once you had functions, it had to uh, continue to be there. And then now we start to get into the areas of, of more concern, the usability and the convenience of it. Um, and these are areas where, um, you know, a lot of effort has gone in and continues to go. And, you know, as Dr. Joe pointed out uh, in his presentation, really I think the key issues uh, here are that what we have to look at is not, is, and I should say, in addition to where should that button be and what should it look like and, um, you know, is it confusing, is it easy to understand, um, but from my perspective, I think much more important, and Dr. Joe brought it out, is the idea of workflows and safety. So one of my responsibilities, I'm in charge of the patient safety process uh, throughout the company, um, and I know that there is frequently a, um, a tension between functionality, usability, workflow, and safety. And so understanding those, the way those different pieces tie together uh, is really important. Um, now, we have uh, lots of uh, uh, good intentions, and I have to be real careful here because I have a representative from ONC um, here, but again, this is, uh, you know, not, well, you, you'll, you'll see, I, I, I ain't bad-mouthing anybody. So uh, the ONC um, has, uh, you know, really played a very important role uh, to go ahead and, you know, move forward the whole implementation of HIT. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for the work that they, that, that they do and the, the changes that they've brought forward. And many of the ideas that are brought up by both by them uh, and by the, uh, uh, the, um, the, the High Tech uh, Act um, are things that we all agree with. They are motherhood and apple pie. So we can't argue with those. Um, however, um, you know, what then occurred is, you know, there, was reg uh, there were regulations that came out. There was a certification process that occurred. And again, I don't want to insult anybody, but what many of us felt like is we were being handcuffed. And especially for Meaningful Use One, that was a huge cultural change. And we went for somewhere between a year and a year and a half where the great, great majority of our development team was involved with the certification process. Um, and so that's why part of my bias, and you'll hear it, is we have to be very careful about what we regulate um, because everything has impacts. Uh, just, you know, even though it's motherhood and apple pie that, you know, that these, you know, pieces should work, um, how much effort, w uh, you know, does it take and does it pull away from other things? So, for instance, because of those 
uh, certification requirements, there was a lot of usability stuff that we just couldn't work on. Um, and so I just bring this up as something that we need to keep in mind and put into prioritization and understand what is the effort that's required. Now clearly innovation and usability is of extreme importance and I keep on pushing uh, innovation when I have this reg regulatory discussion, you know, that it, uh, you know, we, we need to see innovation. And I was very happy and I think we as an industry were very happy to see a move away from a prescriptive uh, usability requirements to really in many ways mimicking what the FDA has done, um, excuse me, which is to say we need to go ahead and um, in sh not tell people what to do but make sure that they have a process in place that takes this uh, in. And we have and have had for many years what we call the, the UX, the user experience team. And when I first met some of the people from the user experience team, I said, what's your background? And he says, oh, I have a background in ID. And I said, oh, me too. Uh, yeah, where did you do your infectious disease fellowship? And he goes, no, 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 no. That's industrial design. <laughs> um, so having those people that understand and they are now fully integrated into our development process. So for instance, we are in the process of redesigning our clinical documentation template. And we have the user experience team intimately involved with th that development process. They are also intimately involved with the patient safety process. So every event that, or hazard, I think is a better term, every hazard that is brought into the company gets reviewed by the development team but also gets passed by the user experience team to see whether or not this issue occurred because of a usability issue. Uh, and again, I can give a whole talk about the stuff that we found for, um, uh, you know, as, as we, you know, really go ahead and, and document all of this. Um, another piece that we have to look at is uh, innovative uh, technology or disruptive technology. I'm, I'm sure many of you in here have read Christian, uh, Clayton Christensen's work uh, on the uh, 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 disruptive uh, innovation. Uh, and we as an industry, um, our need to acknowledge that. So for instance, it was mentioned earlier, the concept of uh, the, the use of, uh, of mobility, smartphones and tablets. To me, that is a disruptive technology to healthcare IT. And like other disruptive technologies, it starts off with being not able to do anywhere near the capability um, of, the, uh, of the established technology but over time it increases its capability. And so we as, as an industry, we either, um, you know, not either, e well, yes, either we embrace it and make it part of us or we will see it overtake us. And, and we as a company are embracing it and, and, and trying to bring the two together to get the best of both worlds. Um, oh, I, I wanted to do it before. So what industry um, do many of us bring up, and uh, Don brought it up before, as an example of um, how usability and safety is really uh, brought into the process. So it's the airline industry. And just the reason I bring this up is because this is one of my little pet peeves, okay? So excuse me, where's my soapbox? Um, <coughs> a pilot, because we hear all the time I should just be able to open up the system and be able to use it. So uh, when somebody, you know, graduates, let's say from high school or we'll give them college, should he be able to get into a 747 and go ahead and take off because it's usable? I don't think so. Uh, so I, I just say that because there is different uh, usability, different functionality depending on who you are. If you are a patient, then it's an entirely different issue. But if I am a physician or a nurse or an anesthesiologist, which is also a physician, I understand, um, 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 I go through training, I do things. And so I believe that, yes, we have to improve the usability, we have to make things clearer and simpler, but the concept that you should be able to use these sophisticated patient care tools just without any training and oversight, to me, uh, is, is, is not an appropriate direction to go in. Uh, has already been discussed, visualization, and so 
Um, I'll, I'll get in, in, in a couple of minutes to the overall visualization, but I wanted to address actually visualization. Um, uh, we have to remember who our audience is for visualization. And the audience, we typically think about visualization is for the clinician, but it also is for the patient, for the family, and so we have to put things and create them differently. And I, this is a lab test that I think many of us, uh, you know, result that many of us will recognize. And I think some of you will recognize this was in Wired Magazine in, it, in 2010, an example of how we can go ahead and just change how we present the, the data, the information, so that it's much more understandable. And as the healthcare IT system expands well beyond the hospital or their doctor's office, as we direct ourselves more and more towards patient engagement and population health, that, that we have to keep in mind the visualization, not just for the end user on the clinician side, but also the, the wider population as a whole. So where are we going? Uh, some of these things, most of these things have already been mentioned. Uh, we are uh, 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 heading towards big data. Um, I think that there is, when I'm in the right audience, and especially when I'm talking about outcomes, um, everything that we do, you know, yes, it's to take care of the patient, um, but all of the adoption issues, the implementation issues, et cetera, they're key and they're important because of all the benefits that it brings. But the other thing that we're doing is we're collecting unbelievable uh, data, like we have never done before. All the stuff that has been that they've tried to do using billing uh, information, we are now, for the first time in healthcare, able to really bring clinical information. And I think it's going to change uh, so many aspects of, of, uh, of what we do. Uh, it will also change the face of research. A whole new area of research is gonna be data mining. Um, so we have uh, big data along with that is clinical decision support is getting more and more sophisticated. Uh, and has to be uh, uh, clearly identified. Uh, oh, so, yeah, so with, along with that, so that's, uh, and, and, and in order for that information to be valuable, we have to present it in a way that is consumable and, and understandable uh, now by administrators and by policy people, et cetera. Uh, so that's clearly a direction. Um, and that also brings us to the other large uh, area of of, of direction of healthcare, which is population health. Um, and we have to be able to present that data in a way that no matter which level you're at, are you um, a, a, a patient, a family member, are you an individual practitioner, are you a patient-centered medical home, are you an ACO, are you a region, a state, a nation? Each one of those has different requirements for how they go ahead and look at the data and where they're going to look at it. And to the point, again, that, that you made, we understand that we can't do all that, okay? We can't do all the little pieces um, that are necessary, and so the concept of an open technology is key. Um, um, because there are just a whole lot of smart people out there that are developing ideas, and oh, and I have two seconds to go, and I can't. Uh, so, uh, but open is really important. Um, and. So uh, it's, it's, the, it's the big data uh, issue and has to do with visualization. I think many of you are familiar with the uh, uh, concept of situational awareness, something that initially came out of the military. If I'm in a battlefield, I need to know who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, where do I get my ammunition from, are there pilots up, uh, up ahead, uh, is the beer cold? Um, uh, but we have to translate that situational awareness uh, into the clinical uh, ability, into the clinical sphere. And that situational awareness is a different depending on who you are. So you have this, let's just call it this cloud uh, of data. And if I look at it from this perspective, because I'm the infectious disease doctor, it's, I'm going to need a different, uh, I have a different perspective than if I'm, I'm the nurse or the administrator. So all of those aspects of being able to create the information and visualize it in a way 
that is meaningful uh, to me from my particular perspective is going to be uh, a really important challenge uh, uh, for, for the future.